While incredible superpowers and unbelievable visuals always find a way to steal the show in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there is so much more going on in these movies that you may have missed, like those sweet rides. There are so many badass rides in the MCU that can make any car fanatic drool, and not all of them are owned by the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist Tony Stark. Sure, he has most of the rad vehicles we've seen in the MCU, but the rides of Black Widow, Luis, and Doctor Strange are nothing to scoff at either, even if they don't own a 12-car garage. Without further ado, here are the coolest cars in the MCU. Of course, we have to start with the most iconic vehicle in all of the MCU, Tony Stark's Audi R8. When you think of all the badass rides in the MCU, this is typically the first one that comes to mind because it was Tony's main ride in the first Iron Man film that started the MCU as we know it. Well, it is for me at least. Every single time I close my eyes and think of MCU cars, I can see that majestic silver Audi R8 racing through the streets of Malibu. Think about it. When you think of the Audi R8, you think of Tony Stark. I'd go as far as to say that the Audi R8 wouldn't be nearly as popular as it is today if it wasn't for Iron Man. In fact, I think Audi in general may have benefited from involving itself with the MCU, but I can't confirm or deny it. All I know is that I would love to have an R8 of my own. Sticking with the whole theme of Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Audis, we have to talk about his final ride, the last car he owned before sacrificing himself to save the world and defeat Thanos. That's right, we're talking about the Audi e-tron GT. The best scene involving the car in Avengers Endgame was when Iron Man drove to the Avengers Mansion so he could give Steve Rogers his shield back, and boy is she a beaut. Not only is this car packing plenty of horsepower under the hood, 590 to be exact, it's also fully electric, which kinda doesn't make sense because it made a super loud roar in that scene, but I still love it, even though I can never look at that scene the same way again. Anyway, it was good to know that Tony Stark turned to electric cars before he died, which truly speaks volumes about his character arc in the MCU. Just like he stopped building weapons, he stopped polluting the planet, and we respect him for that. You're the man, Tony Stark. You are the man. Another one of Tony's more interesting rides is the Acura NSX. Well, it was a Honda NSX at the time because it was still just a prototype, but when it was finally released commercially, it was known as the Acura NSX, so that's what I'll call it. We first saw this car at the end of the Avengers, when Tony Stark and his new best friend, fellow science bro Bruce Banner, drove off into the sunset to probably talk about science some more or something. No matter what all those fanfiction stories may make you think, I'm fairly confident that they just talked about science. And maybe cars. Believe it or not, even James James Bond didn't only drive Aston Martins. He switched to BMW for a short time in the 90s before going back, which is similar to what Tony Stark did here with this gorgeous red Acura NSX. He started off an Audi guy, then switched to Acura and back to Audi, so as long as it starts with an A, Tony Stark will drive it. Except Aston Martins. He never drove those. But it's time to move on from Tony Stark's car collection, at least for a little bit, and get into the sick rides of some of our other MCU favorites, starting with Doctor Strange. At the beginning of his solo movie, we see Doctor Stephen Strange, a wealthy surgeon who only thinks about himself and solely takes on easy surgeries so he could keep his 100% success rate intact. Of course, with all the money he made, he purchased himself a Lamborghini Huracan, the same car he got into a huge crash with that derailed his medical career and sent him on a path to become the Sorcerer Supreme. If you're wondering why the car has a very non-Italian sounding name, that's because Lamborghini typically names their cars Spanish words. It's a shame that we didn't get to see more of this gorgeous Italian supercar, but I understand the role it played in the movie, so I won't complain too much. But seeing it all destroyed brought a tear to my eye. Okay, so we've already talked about German, Japanese, and Italian cars, so now it's time to get into one of the best and most iconic American cars ever made, the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. That's right, it's not just any Corvette, it's the Corvette Stingray. Unsurprisingly, we saw this car in Captain America the Winter Soldier, but surprisingly it wasn't Captain America's ride. Instead of Steve Rogers driving the car, it was Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow's ride. She's an incredibly badass assassin, so 
I'm not surprised to see her behind the wheel of a C7 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. I just expected an American to be driving an American car, that's all. That being said, this car is just as gorgeous as the woman driving it. This 2014 Corvette had a V8 engine with 455 horsepower and a top speed of 195 miles per hour. So while it's not on the same level as the Ferraris and Lambos of the world, Corvettes probably have the most bang for their buck out of any car you could buy. So much power at such a low price. Hey, that should be their motto. Black Panther was a pretty awesome movie. Okay, the CGI in the Wakandan mind fight scene wasn't the best, but other than that, it was a top-notch movie. Chadwick Boseman was awesome as T'Challa in his first solo movie, and the nation of Wakanda was even awesomer, if that's even a word. Well, if it isn't, it is now. Wakanda is the world's best-kept secret in the MCU, but the LC500 may be Lexus's best-kept secret. We saw this car in a stunning blue during the exhilarating chase scene in the movie, and if that scene was a Lexus commercial, I would have bought one right away. Oh, it cost over $90,000. Well, never mind then. All you car enthusiasts out there remember the Lexus LFA, right? Well, the Lexus LC500 is pretty much just a toned down version of that car. It kept the design, but toned everything else down to make it a bit more reasonable. Although I wouldn't consider $90,000 reasonable. The LC500 is a car fit for a prince, and I just love the way its V8 engine purrs. I mentioned earlier that Tony Stark has an unbelievable amount of exotic cars, and when he's not driving them around, his closest friend and chauffeur, Happy Hogan is. Case in point, the Rolls-Royce Phantom that we saw in Iron Man 2. The Rolls-Royce Phantom is one of the most iconic cars in the world, and is instantly recognizable. It's the quintessential, I'm not only rich, but I'm rich enough to have a chauffeur car. It is incredibly luxurious, very spacious, and to top it all off, it has suicide doors. Nothing is fancier than having a chauffeur open up a suicide door for you, and that is exactly what Tony Stark was dealing with in Monaco. Talk about fancy. Now, the car did get absolutely destroyed by Ivan Vanko, but it did make an appearance in the movie, likely to showcase just how wealthy Tony Stark really is, and it really brought that point home. Either way, even if it didn't get totaled by Whiplash, it is a British vehicle, and they're not known for being the most reliable cars, so it probably wouldn't have lasted Tony too long anyway. So far, all the vehicles I've talked about are quite pricey, and it's time to be a bit more realistic and talk about a car most people could afford. While Luis's van is very practical, it's not quite what I'd consider to be a badass ride. You know what is a badass ride, though? Luis's purple Hyundai Veloster with flame decals on its side from Ant-Man and the Wasp. The way he got his hands on this quirky car is pretty interesting. Hank Pym loved to carry around a bunch of Hot Wheels-esque small cars that he could enlarge to real size, and one of them was this badass Veloster. It was hilarious to see Luis tear around the city in this ridiculous vehicle, and he actually kind of made it look cool. I would be lying if I said I didn't want a Veloster of my own after seeing Luis with one. The car fit right in with all the other craziness going on in the movie. Can I get an F in the comments section to pay respects to the Shelby Cobra that Tony Stark absolutely destroyed while testing out the Mark II suit? He slammed through his roof and absolutely destroyed the American classic car. As an avid Shelby Cobra lover myself, it was a real shame and brought a tear to my eye, just like seeing the beaten up Lamborghini Huracan and Doctor Strange did. The Shelby Cobra is much more than just a cute small car. It is a true badass in every sense of the word. It's a vehicle with so much history. They started off as racing cars, and if you watched Ford v Ferrari, then you saw plenty of these in the movie. When you think of an American race car, the Shelby Cobra is what most of us think of. But it's actually a British American car sold as the AC Cobra in the UK and the Shelby Cobra in the US. Still, that doesn't change the fact that it's an icon, and Tony Stark should have been ashamed of himself for destroying it. While the Shelby Cobra got totaled by Tony Stark's recklessness, luckily the rare car right next to it, the Selene S7, survived. And this car isn't part British, part American. It's all American. Just like the Shelby Cobra, Tony Stark never actually drove the car, but I had to talk about it anyway because it's just too badass to leave out of the video. At first glance, it's clear that the car looks a lot like the McLaren F1, but the F1 is in a world of its own. The Selene S7 is awesome, but it's not that good. The Selene S7 has a V8 engine 
engine capable of producing 550 horsepower, which is quite impressive. While that's enough to raise an eyebrow or two, its price can do the same, as buying a Salina 7 would set you back about $375,000. Yeah, you might as well just get a Lambo at that point, if you ever find yourself in a position where you could spend half a mil on that car. And those are the most badass rides in the MCU. Personally, I'm a big fan of the classic Shelby Cobra, but which car was your favorite? Are there any awesome vehicles we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU videos. Thanks for watching.